Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining our webinar today on Chromebook one-to-one -one challenges and how to overcome them. My name is Dean Bates and I'll be joined in a little while by my colleague Jeff Lalonde. Now before we get started, I thought I'd address the elephant in the room. Uh, that elephant being that both Jeff and I represent a Chromebook management software solution called Visor. Now today's session isn't a sales pitch for Visor, it's not a demo of Visor. Um, what we're hoping to do today is share some general strategies and tips which everybody can use, um, whether you use a tool like Visor or simply a spreadsheet. Now, if you have Chromebooks or you're struggling to manage other assets and you want to know more about Visor, if you go to visor.cloud slash Chromebooks, then there's lots of information on there. Then you can schedule a demo. One of our members of our team will be sort of very happy to show you around the tool. Um, so with that elephant out of the way, we'll get going with the, the sort of main content um, for today, which is again, to share some strategies and tips for how you can better manage your Chromebooks and other IT assets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. I appreciate that. And so, yeah, as Dean mentioned, uh, we are colleagues, worked together uh, at, the, at our company for um, 20 years together. Dean and I have been uh, working for our organization, uh, although the organization itself has been around for uh, a little over 30 years. And so uh, we've been doing this for quite a while. We've got different um, organizations on our client list. And certainly for the first uh, 20 of the 30 years, we were focusing uh, on all sorts of different industries. But about 10 years ago is when we started our focus on schools uh, and the management of Chromebooks. And this stemmed basically from a gap in the space um, uh, in our industry with regards to asset management. Uh, the gap was um, that schools were not specifically focused on. And of course, there's a unique set of challenges um, faced by schools and school districts. And so we identified that gap and we moved into that space. Um, so for the past 10 years, that's really what we have been focusing on. Um, with the advent of the Chromebook, that's really um, what led us to this industry. We noticed that schools um, had a lot of common challenges and certainly management of Chromebooks was one of them. And then the movement into the one-to-one uh, -one space um, and, and the movement towards one-to-one, -one, then of course the pandemic, um, was really uh, the point at which the, the, the kind of tipping point for uh, the absolute need for the management of, uh, um, of the Chromebooks. And then of course, the identification of these challenges is what Dean and I are here to discuss with you today. And so moving into those challenges, the ones that we'll identify, and of course there are many challenges that schools and districts face that are unique to, to, to the education space, but we're gonna focus on a couple that we think um, are the most important, or at least the ones that sort of come to us uh, most often. And so the first one that we identified, and this one consistently blows my mind, to be quite frank, it's something that um, it, it just, it's shocking to me. It was shocking when I first heard about it and first sort of learned it and realized it. Um, and, and one that just continues to do that continues to shock me. And that's the teach uh, the tech to user ratio. So in the enterprise space where we originally came from, the tech to user ratio was one to 10. This is a, a sort of generally accepted industry standard as it relates to um, the number of techs for each, for the number of employees. So one to 10. In the education space, as you all well know, this number is exceptionally higher, extraordinarily, exponentially, in fact. So it's very, very high as it relates to the tech to user ratio in the education space. And by user in that space, we're talking about, of course, um, faculty and staff and, and most importantly, students. And that ratio is one to 200, 300, 400, 500. It's, it's, it's incredible what it is that techs have to deal with in terms of an overall space. Um, you can imagine, for example, um, you know, an enterprise uh, in the enterprise space, uh, you know, there's never a case where they have to onboard a uh, hundred or a thousand or um, thousands of employees at once. And yet schools and techs uh, in schools and school districts have to do this every summer. So that's a very big challenge to overcome. And Dean and I will be able to discuss a little bit about what you can do to overcome that challenge. The next challenge that I want to discuss is the, um, the, the process challenge. And so Process is something that's a very uh, important concept within the management space, within the management of IT assets and specifically Chrome de uh, Chromebook devices. Um, but unfortunately with process, uh, there was a point at which um, all districts that we work with, or sorry, many of the districts that we work with, um, uh, were sort of thrown into the deep end with regards to one-to-one -to -one and getting Chromebooks in students' hands and didn't have the opportunity to define a process 
that they were going to use to manage the distribution, manage the recollection of the Chromebooks, manage the movement of those Chromebooks throughout its entire life cycle. Um, so things uh, were getting lost. Things were falling through the gaps. Things still are. If there's a, no, sense, uh, no system in place and no process in place, um, then those gaps continue to be there, continue to exist. Recently, I was speaking with a school district who was identifying, and this is not a large school district, it's a relatively small school district, that identified the loss of Chromebooks costing that district $20,000 last year, approximately $20,000 last year. Again, not a large school district. And this basically stemmed from the lack of process or the simplicity of process around checking those Chromebooks out and allocating them to students. So a librarian would be forced to use a library system that wasn't designed to manage or track Chromebooks. And the checkout process was so cumbersome um, that the librarian would get distracted uh, while checking out a Chromebook to a student. They would get distracted by another student or um, some other distraction that came uh, to that librarian and, and and the checkout process would be stopped and that student would still leave with the Chromebook and then that Chromebook was lost. So that um, was a very easy gap to identify. And so without a simple process by which to use, to, uh, a simple process to follow, um, uh, it's very diff or it's very easy, I should say, um, for these Chromebooks and devices uh, to get lost. So the process, uh, the good news is that you didn't have a, a, the, the space, the industry didn't have time to identify a process um, in order to manage these Chromebooks because of uh, throwing, being thrown into a one-to-one -one situation. But the good news is that there is a process that has already been defined. And so this ITIL process, what we refer to as ITIL, um, it, it's not super important to understand sort of the minutia of ITIL, but what is important is that it's a set of standards that were defined by our IT industry as if you follow these standards, you're adhering to, to the best practices related to the effective and efficient management of your Chromebook devices. And so if there's any solution that you can find that adheres to these standards, then you can know and have confidence that out of the box, you're already adhering to those industry standards that were defined by the IT industry as best practices related to the management of IT assets. The next challenge then that we're going to uh, focus on is going to be the data source. And so um, the data source that you uh, are, are working with, the data sources, uh, the challenge here, sorry, is the overload of these data sources. So there's many different data sources. You've got your SIS, you've got the Google Admin Console, you've got spreadsheets, these big giant reams of spreadsheets um, that are essentially trying to track who has which device where did this Chromebook go? What are we doing? Um, you know, which student has it? Where is that student located? Um, when was that device purchased? What, you know, what, if any financial information do I have about those devices? Um, is it, you know, all of the, the different sources that you have um, are coming from different schools within the district or, or different areas within the school. Um, and, and everybody's sort of trying to do it their own way, essentially the best that they can. So I'm filling out a spreadsheet this way. Somebody in another school is filling out the spreadsheet that way. Um, and I'm trying to correlate as a technician, as a centralized IT repository, I'm trying to uh, understand, I'm trying to, to disseminate all of the information that's coming in these different giant um, spreadsheets in different formats, potentially in different ways, different methodologies. I'm trying to put that together and make heads or tails of the information and try to make some management decisions and effectively manage um, my, my, my Chromebook estate. I can't do it. It's not something that can be done really without a centralized system in place in order to bring this information together, um, the financial information, the student information, the device information, the location information, put it all into one single pane of glass that I can see through uh, in order, again, to make these effective and efficient management decisions as it relates um, to my devices. Moving on to the, the last challenge that we're going to identify today and sort of discuss here is the repairs. And the repairs for me are an interesting one insofar as it seems to have um, kind of snuck up on us a little bit. Uh, how do we manage these repairs? What I mean by snuck up on us is, is when we went to one-to-one, -to -one, when we were forced into one-to-one -one or um, had to go there very, very rapidly in order to satisfy the needs of the students and get the technology into their hands, we didn't sort of anticipate this significant uptick in repairs. And then how do we manage those repairs? What's the process behind that? How do we get the, how do we how do we deliver a messaging clearly to students to say, this is what you do if you have a, a problem with your Chromebook? And then for teachers or librarian staff or secretaries or, or the tech staff, what do we do with the Chromebooks when they come back into repair? How do we get new Chromebooks quickly into the students' hands to replace these ones that are in repair? 
what's the process that we're going to use to manage it? What are the costs for these repairs? You know, the costs quickly get out of control. Um, the management of the devices, where are they? Who has them? What's the history behind them in terms of repairs? Quickly gets out of control. And so again, a centralized repository or a process um, to manage those repairs, defining it clearly, articulating it to the students, to the parents, for anybody involved, uh, quickly became um, identified as a challenge that needed to be overcome in this space. And so what I'm going to do at this point is sort of um, take a look at these challenges as a whole, identify them, um, and then turn things over to Dean here so that Dean can speak to us about how is it that we can overcome these challenges together. Yes, thanks, Jeff. So I'm going to try and give uh, some advice and some strategies on how to overcome these one to one challenges. So the first strategy is to map out the complete life cycle of your Chromebooks. Um, this talks back a little to where Jeff was discussing processes and ITIL. And I'm not going to get into the sort of detail of ITIL, but if you can understand your life cycle, then you're going to be in a really good position. What we suggest that those that schools do is sit down with the stakeholders or representatives of the stakeholders and identify each stage of their Chromebook life cycle. So from cradle to grave, and then what processes are needed at each stage. So the life cycle typically starts when a school decides to go one to one, either in the classroom or take home one to one. And then they select a technology such as Chromebooks in order to achieve those learning outcomes. Then we move on to purchasing. So are the Chromebooks going to be purchased outright? Um, is there going to be a lease agreement with a service provider? Are parents going to make a contribution? Are you going to use funding sources? And if you're going to use funding sources, then you need a process in place to ensure that that Chromebook is used for the specific criteria of that funding source. Allocation and deployments are other big stages um, in a Chromebook's life cycle. How is the district going to allocate those Chromebooks to individual schools? And how will the schools allocate the Chromebooks to grade levels and to um, individual students? So are teachers going to be involved or librarians? What training um, do you need to put in place um, for this to happen? Then we move along the life cycle. So the Chromebooks are hopefully in use. Maybe there's some repairs. Maybe the Chromebooks are lost or stolen, and you should have a process um, for when Chromebooks are lost or stolen, what needs to be done there. Then we come to the end of life, and the first thing with regards to end of life is how are you going to identify devices which are end of life? Some of the schools we work with have a flat five-year policy. So once the Chromebook is older than five years, five years after its purchase date, then it's marked as um, end of life. Uh, other schools, it's when the Chromebook no longer receives automatic updates um, from Google or where the Chromebook has received uh, like quite a considerable amount um, of repairs. Once you've identified those Chromebooks which are approaching end of life, then you need a process in place to replace those Chromebooks. You also need a process um, for dealing with those physical assets which you no longer need. So some of the schools we work with, then they allow students to keep the device, in which case you need to make sure it's deprovisioned from the Google admin console. And maybe there's paper trail needed to exchange ownership. Um, if you're bringing the Chromebooks back in, then how are you going to dispose of those Chromebooks? And what responsible recycling or disposal um, procedures do you need to uh, follow? So excuse the shameless promotion, but tools such as Visor can help reduce the workload by automating some of these um, processes. So within Visor, we have best practice workflows out of the box for each stage in the Chromebook lifecycle. And to quickly give an example, one of those is when a device is reported as lost or stolen. So we have a self-service form where families can log in and say the device allocated to them is lost or stolen. What Visor will do then is send them an email confirmation confirming that the device is lost or stolen and if necessary calculate a fee or a cost associated with that and that calculation could be based on for example whether or not um, insurance has been purchased for that device. Then Visor can disable that Chromebook within the Google Admin Console so it can no longer be used. And in this particular workflow, then there's actually no um, sort of employ no resource required at all um, because it's all happening automatically. The self-service form, uh, then an automated email, and then automatically disabling the device, and then obviously uh, marking that device as lost or stolen. 
The second strategy is to have a central device inventory, a single source of truth where you can see all of your Chromebooks alongside other IT assets such as smart boards or projectors which you need to manage. Um, this central device inventory, um, it could be a tool such as Visor or it could be a spreadsheet. Um, so in fact, many schools and districts come to us and when they found it difficult um, to maintain a spreadsheet. Whatever you use as the source of this information, as a bare minimum, then you need to know what devices you have, who has those devices, where those devices are, so what school or classroom, some basic purchase information, such as when you purchase the device, and the status of the device. So is the device in use? Um, is it underutilized in storage? Is it in repair or approaching its end of its life? So at a minimum, then you want this information within your central device inventory. If you're planning to maintain this in a spreadsheet, then what I would suggest is that you concentrate on the quality of the information over the, the quantity. Because the more information you have, particularly within a spreadsheet, then the more difficult it is to manage and update that information. And if the information is inaccurate, then it is sort of very little use to you. Schools come to us um, when they've typically found it difficult to maintain this data within a spreadsheet. And Visor provides a single pane of glass where schools and districts can see all of their Chromebooks side by side um, with their other assets. Visor provides that central inventory so you can easily see what devices you have, the status of those devices, assigned, in storage, repaired, who has the devices and where those devices are. Visor consolidates information from multiple sources. So talking to Jeff's point about data overload. So information from the student information system sits side by side and details coming from the Google Admin Console and your purchase and warranty information. Visor makes it easy to maintain uh, this data by wrapping processes around it. So you don't have to update cells in a spreadsheet. There's processes such as this one, where teachers, uh, librarians, and in some of our schools, even students can check out a device. We integrate with the student information system here. So it's easy to identify the student based on their student ID or their name or email address. We can confirm the student at the top and the device, and that's all we need to do to check out the device to a student. We also have workflow so you can check out many devices in one go at the beginning of a year. The third strategy is to have a clear and documented um, repair policy. What I mean by um, clear is that it's clearly communicated to all of the stakeholders um, within the school and district. Um, as Jeff mentioned, when you go one to one, the number of repairs is going to increase. So one of the first things you need to determine is who's going to be responsible for these repairs. Is it going to be the district, the school, or is it going to be parents? And what we typically see is that schools and districts take on that responsibility. In that case, are you actually going to have a member of staff um, within the school who is going to do the repair? Are they going to fix the keyboard and the, replace the screen? Or are you going to use a third party who's going to do that for you? What device is the student going to use and why their device is being repaired? Um, are you going to provide them with a loaner? In which case they will get their original device back once the repair is complete. Or is it going to be a swap out? In which case they essentially get a replacement device and their, rep their original device goes back into rotation once the repair is complete. We advise that schools and districts keep track of how much their repairs are costing them. And many schools have a process of chargebacks where they charge back the cost of a repair um, to the student, to the families. Um, we see many different processes and policies in place for chargebacks. So sometimes it's a flat fee. Um, sometimes schools have a, a scenario where the first repair is free and the second repair is uh, 50%. Um, you may want a policy and procedures in place if it was malicious damage or an unnecessary repair. Again, what's important is that you communicate this repair policy and procedures and to 
all those stakeholders, particularly the parents and the students. And this can help instill some responsibility into looking after the Chromebooks and the devices and inform them of what they need to do um, should their devices need to be repaired. Tools like Visor can help schools identify frequent flyer students, so students who have had um, an above average amount of repairs, and Lemon devices, which are again single devices which have had lots of different repairs associated with them. Your repair tracking system should allow you to see any third parties which are um, making the repairs for you, see reparts which are being replaced, track the cost of the repairs, and charge back and that repair using your policy. So, I have two more um, time saving uh, tips. The first one is to consider using your own asset tags and not to be tempted to use serial numbers um, which manufacturers and put on the devices when you're barcoding. The reason not to use the serial number is that you can lose control of simply where the serial number sticker is placed. So from model to model, this can move from one location to another. So if you have a knowledge base article which says, well, the serial number is the bottom right hand corner, and then that changes on the next model, then the best case scenario is that they have to look elsewhere. The worst case scenario is that there's a different number there and it can be very confusing. The other issue with using serial numbers is that some manufacturers put two barcodes right next to each other. So it can be really difficult to scan a single barcode. And if the barcode isn't checksummed, then you can actually end up scanning both of them. And in which case, then the number isn't the same as the number which is being reported back to the Google Admin Console. And the third issue, and a school was telling me about this recently, is that if the logic board is replaced, then the serial number on the logic board is no longer the same as the one on the sticker. And a school had this issue um, recently and there was using a third party. So there was having like, a great deal of difficulty trying to determine why the serial numbers on the sticker didn't match up and with the serial number within the Google Admin Console. And it's because the logic board was being replaced and therefore the number was different. So what I would suggest is that not to be tempted to use the serial numbers and to use your own um, asset tag labels. Um, you can buy these relatively cheaply, you can customize them with contact information, and if you build them into your workflow, then there's really very little overhead in terms of applying them onto devices. And what I would suggest is if you um, look for a tool, then look for a tool which supports barcoding standards so you can use off-the-shelf um, equipment. So my final um, tip is to ask your reseller about zero-touch enrollment. And so we're not a Chromebook um, reseller. There's plenty of great resellers um, out there. But what I would recommend is you talk to them about uh, zero touch enrollment because I've heard some excellent feedback about it from uh, schools and districts who are using it. If you're not aware, zero touch enrollment is where the reseller onboards the Chromebook, enrolls the Chromebook into the Google Admin Console um, for you as a pre-provisioned Chromebook. And what this means is that schools or districts can drop ship um, those Chromebooks directly to the schools. And then there's nothing to do. You can literally uh, turn on the Chromebook and it's on your, in your Google Admin domain and you can log in and it will pull down um, all of those policies. So within Visor, we've got two um, features which help support this. Uh, the first one is that we can allocate a device um, to a student in your central inventory based on the logged on user. Um, so we have some nice functionality where we will check if it was a tech who logged in or a sibling and we'll ignore those um, false logins. So this allows you to automatically keep your inventory um, up to date in, in terms of allocated users rather than doing a manual um, checkout. The other function we have is that you can see these pre-provisioned Chromebooks within Visor and districts can allocate those Chromebooks before they've even shipped from the reseller to individual schools. And the flip side of this is that schools are able to see Chromebooks which are going to be shipped to them in advance. So my five strategies and tips for helping with Chromebook one-to-one -one management is to understand and map out your Chromebook lifecycle, to keep an accurate central device inventory, 
to have a clear repair policies and procedures and make sure that's communicated uh, to all of the stakeholders, particularly the families. To consider using asset tags um, rather than barcodes um, when you're barcoding, asset tags rather than serial numbers when you're barcoding, and to ask your Chromebook resellers about zero touch enrollment. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Jeff. Yeah, I think there's another one that we can sort of speak about there just generally, and that's kind of um, keeping an open mind. So a lot of the schools and districts that we work with have great ideas about um, how to overcome some of their challenges, but also have sort of preconceived notions about, well, this is the way um, I've been doing it. And so this is a challenge that I have to face this way. But in sort of speaking with us, and when, when I get the opportunity to speak with schools and districts specifically and sort of share information that I've received from other schools and districts and sort of create a community around this conversation, um, it's often amazing to sort of see people realize oh yeah that's true i can do it this way because this other district's doing it this way and so all i'm suggesting here is keeping an open mind and um consider sort of new ideas and, and approaches as to how you might face these challenges and if you give us a call um it, it's a benefit for me selfishly i'll I'll be able to learn a little bit more about, uh, you know, gain a little bit more experience and insight into the space and find out um, what's going on in your world. And perhaps, though, I can offer you uh, insight into sort of what other districts might be doing to overcome the same types of challenges that you're facing. So I do encourage you to give us a call, um, contact us. There's lots of ways of doing that. Uh, and I think Dean's got uh, um, a last slide here that he can sort of bring up to give us uh, a reminder of that, uh, of that URL, that uh, uh, that website that you can visit and using that link uh, on the screen. So thank you very much for attending our webinar today. I really hope you found some of the strategies and tips which we've um, presented useful um, in terms of managing your Chromebooks um, within your schools and school districts. If you'd like some more information on Visor, then if you go to visor.cloud slash Chromebooks, um, there's lots of information on there. Um, you can sign up for a demo. We'll be really happy um, to show you around the tool. But again, thank you very much um, for um, watching our webinar today. And I really look forward to um, speaking to you all in the future.